Welcome back to Real House DIY. Today we're back at the hot water boiler. We're going to talk about the pressure relief valve and why that might be leaking. And if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and comment. So first, if you haven't already done so, I've got another video out there. It's an overview of a hot water boiler system, description of all the different components and how it works. Definitely go take a look at that if you need any more information on anything. Here's the pressure relief valve, also sometimes called a safety relief valve. It's the most important component of the system in terms of protecting all of your other components from potential high pressure. It's got the arrow here, it's gonna be direction of water. If this drains, the water's gonna drain out. Also to make sure you install it in the correct orientation. It has this piece on top here. If you pull this lever, it's gonna drain some water. And it's rated for a certain PSI, this one 30 PSI. So if your water pressure goes above 30 PSI, that'll open the valve and drain some water. So your pressure relief valve, pretty simple to think about. You've got the arrows here for direction of water flow if any water is going to drain out. So if your water pressure is very high here, it's going to push on the seal here and it's going to move up. There's a spring and water will escape and drain out. And then you have this piece on the top here. If you want to manually open the valve, you pull up on that. And when you're talking about failures of the valve itself, it's more likely to fail open than closed. If this seal is not seated properly, gets at an angle for whatever reason, you're going to have some water leaking. If you have any scale build up there, it'll cause some water to leak. If you have any debris in the water that happens to get stuck in here, then it won't seat properly and will leak water. If you have wear on any of the parts, such as the spring. Now let's say your pressure relief valve is, is leaking and you think you're going to take it apart and clean it. I'd advise against that. This is a maintenance part, an important part. It's easy to mess it up, get out of calibration, and it's only a 20 $30 part. It's recommended to replace it once every 10 years. So if you're going into the trouble to take it apart and clean it, just replace it. There's a few reasons why this valve might leak. As I just mentioned, any failures within the valve, of course, and it typically won't fail full open. You usually won't have water pouring out of this. It's gonna be a slow leak or drip. So you have that seal in here. If it's not seated properly, it's at an angle or deteriorating, then some water is gonna get past. Wear and tear on any of the other components, such as the spring. So if you're monitoring pressure, and it's not above 30 PSI on the gauge here, and your pressure relief valve is leaking water, then it's gonna be caused by the pressure relief valve because the water pressure in the system is below 30 PSI. That's the reason why the valve itself might be broken and leaking water. Otherwise, everything else is working properly. Next reason, your system might have actual overpressure. If your gauge is reading above 30 PSI, then the valve is going to do its job. It's going to leak some water. So here's your expansion tank. If the expansion tank isn't working properly, and it's not keeping a constant pressure within the system, when you call for heat, the water is going to heat up, causing higher pressure. Expansion tank won't do its job, so then you'll be left with higher water pressure in the system. I have another video about the expansion tank and how to check that if that's working properly or if it's broken. Now, if it's not the expansion tank, you might actually have a shutoff valve like this one right here between the expansion tank and the rest of the system. If that valve is closed, then you're gonna get higher water pressure and your pressure relief valve will leak. Other potential problems, but less likely, if your pressure reducing valve is broken, you're gonna get higher water pressure from the city supply into the system. Very unlikely if your water pressure into the system, such as from the city, is overpressurized. That's gonna cause problems with your boiler system as well as everywhere else in your house. There is a chance you can get multiple failures within the system between the pressure relief valve, your gauge, and the expansion tank. If your gauge is broken and not reading correct pressure, you might think everything's fine. And that might be the case, but then if you have a broken expansion tank, and your pressure is consistently actually going over pressure, you're gonna be leaking the pressure relief valve. Now let's say that your gauge is fine, it's reading the correct pressure, and it's good pressure, around 14 PSI for example, nowhere near the 30 PSI for the pressure relief valve to open, but your pressure relief valve is leaking water. This is very common in the fall when your heating system first starts up again after summer. Your water has been cool for a while, that seal and the pressure relief valve will get used to those warm temperatures again and start working properly. That's very similar to these other 
gaskets in the system such as this one if you have cold water temperature throughout the summer because you're not using your boiler then spots around this gasket will contract allowing a little water to get out that's usually why i prefer to keep the pilot running all year round if your pressure relief valve is occasionally leaking and your pressure is fine on the gauge you most likely have some scale buildup around the seal that's normal it'll work its way out if you have a constant drip of water from your pressure relief valve and the pressure is fine under the 30 psi that this one is rated to then that seal might not be seated perfectly straight in that case what i would do open this valve manually for a split second it will drain some water out but it might also reseat the valve properly now what i would consider normal drips and leaking from a pressure relief valve and we're talking about this pressure relief valve here since i've owned the house at least 10 years you have your bucket under the drain here and you can see the highest level that this has ever been just a small amount in the very bottom of the bucket there not much water at all you know, you're talking about maybe half a cup of water at the most ever in that bucket if your bucket is actually filling up that's the point where i would replace the pressure relief valve now let's say you've replaced your pressure relief valve with a brand new valve and it's dripping or leaking and your water pressure is fine in the system you'll want to make sure one that your valve is rated to the correct pressure and you didn't accidentally get one with a lower pressure two that you've installed it in the correct orientation and three it may just not be seated properly you can open the valve manually and try to reseat the valve if all that is good then you may have just gotten a bad valve last thing worth mentioning and somewhat dependent on where your pressure relief valve is located I always keep a bucket under mine if and when it does start leaking or dripping this one here is just inches away from the boiler it's very warm on the floor around the boiler and it could be leaking for weeks or months and you just don't know it because the water dries up very fast once it touches that concrete floor now to replace your pressure relief valve it's pretty simple you can shut off your thermostats upstairs so you're not calling for heat or you can also shut off the power right here you want to watch your pressure and temperature gauge wait till they dip down temperature will get to 120 at least close your shutoff valve to the system I have this one right here if you don't have a shutoff valve there or any other one such as this one further upstream you can turn off the main water to the house and that will ensure once you relieve pressure in the system you won't have any more water flowing out then you turn off any other shutoff valves you have I have shutoff valves on every pipe going up to each zone what that will do is keep all that water in the pipes up above so all that's left for water in this part of the system will be what's in the boiler and up as high as that shutoff valve then you're going to find your lowest drain valve I have this one right here let a little bit of water out you don't need to let out much at all or since you're replacing the valve feel free to just open this up let some water drain out right there given the location of this one it's above the boiler right below the shutoff valves I have on these pipes going to the zones there's hardly going to be any water at all to let out to get below this point here finally these are just threaded connections very simple there unfortunately whoever did the work last on this one they could have brought this pipe out an extra inch because can see there's not enough room to just spin that off you have to i'd have to either cut this or unsolder that connection maybe take these boxes off to get the access so you could just spin this off when i eventually have to replace this pressure relief valve i'll definitely extend the pipe an extra inch or two so it has that clearance that's courtesy for the next person to work on it then after you have that new pressure relief valve installed want to open up the shutoff valve to let water into the system make sure your pressure relief valve is not leaking and then open up your other shutoff valves for the rest of the system turn power back on call for heat and monitor the pressure relief valve for leaks thanks for watching any questions or suggestions for new videos please put them in the comments